I've been cooking for a while and it always makes me smile when a recipe turns out just right. I like to saute and grill every day, you know it satisfies my appetite. But what I like to do when I'm all alone with you is create a new recipe. Hey everybody, I'm Johnny Moe, the musical chef, and today we're talking all about oysters. That's right, oysters from the Chesapeake Bay and oysters from the Atlantic Ocean. First, let's talk about these great ones here. These are oysters that are grown right on the Atlantic Ocean in Willis Wharf, Virginia by H.M. Terry Company. They have a nice salty flavor. They're really delicious. Over here, we have our Bayside oysters. These are grown on Onancock Creek, which is a creek right off the Chesapeake Bay. They have a much creamier flavor, not as salty as the seaside oysters because the salinity level is not as high in the bay. Now that we know what we're dealing with, let's get down to talking about what we're going to do next. One of the easiest ways to enjoy an oyster is probably the most classic way is just raw on the half shell. We're going to do that with a classic French method making a mignonette. That's a red wine vinaigrette basically. Let me show you what you're going to need to do that. This recipe is super easy. Just some red wine vinegar, some shallots. A shallot is a version of a red onion. It's a little spicier, a little smaller, but it's a very delicious flavor. Some black pepper and a pinch of sugar. So we're going to start by mincing up this shallot. We're just going to cut it in half, cut the ends off, and peel it just like you would an onion. Just peeling that first layer of skin back. Sometimes you can find already peeled shallots, which are great as well. Now we'll just do a rough mince on these just to get them nice and chopped up. Remember to always curve your fingertips back when making cuts like this because you want to keep all 10 digits. Hard to play guitar with only nine fingers. Now that we have our shallots minced, we're just going to combine the rest of the ingredients. So we'll put the shallots into a large bowl and we're going to cover them with some red wine vinegar, a pinch of sugar, and some black pepper to taste. It's a very simple vinaigrette to get the flavor of those onions in there with the vinegar. And that sharp acidity of the vinegar will really pair perfectly with the creaminess and saltiness of the oysters. So now we're going to put that in the fridge and let that rest and chill down for a little bit while we start working on the oysters. Two of the most important things you want to have when opening an oyster is a good sharp oyster knife and a nice dry rag. I put the rag over top of the oyster and work the knife right in the back valve there applying even pressure and work the knife around, careful not to break the shell up too much and detaching the oyster from the valve and you pry that off and that is a delicious looking oyster right there. Now we'll clean our knife off and scoop underneath the oyster to remove it from the shell. Connective tissue there. We want to save that nice liquid in there, that's called the oyster liquor. It is almost like a brine that holds this oyster right in the shell there and adds so much more flavor to it. We're going to get about six or eight of these going and get ready to check on our mignonette and see if it's chilled down. So now you can see that the flavors in this shallot have really opened up. They've got to know the red wine, the pepper, and the sugar is all nice and dissolved. So we're just going to take a little spoonful, just a little over each oyster there. Just to add a little bit of that acidity and spicy shallot the beautiful briny flavor of the oyster. And that, my friends, is the first simple, easy way to do oysters. But next, we're going to take it to the next level. We're going to jazz it up with a little bit of Eastern Shore seafood crab stuffed oysters. So let me get my crab meat together and get everything rolling here, and we're going to make this happen. Look at that. It looks absolutely delicious. The spiciness of the shallot, the saltiness of the oyster, and the sweet acidity of the vinaigrette. I can't wait to put this in my mouth. Let's see, here we go. Mm. Absolutely delicious. Little rule of thumb, bite, bite, swallow when eating raw, raw oysters. That's what they say, two bites and swallow. Let's get on to the next recipe. Whew. Now that I've got all these oysters shucked and ready to go to make our stuffing, I've got a few left over. So a quick easy way to cook some oysters up while you're waiting for your other ones to roast off I just pop them on a cookie sheet and put them right in the oven for about 15 minutes. 
just until they pop open. They'll be delicious, still moist and juicy. You can pull them out, dip them in your cocktail sauce or whatever have you. Let's get together and make our sauce. So I went and saw my friend Woody over at Eastern Shore Seafood and got a pound of his delicious jumbo lump crab meat. This stuff is dynamite, it is no shell, all jumbo lump. I mean, it's the best, the cream of the crop, the best part of the whole blue crab right there. We're gonna mix that with a little bit of binder, stuff it into our oysters and get them rocking in the oven. So here's what you're gonna need. A whole mess of the best jumbo lump crab meat you can find. Some heavy duty mayonnaise. One egg, which came first? Some Chesapeake style seafood seasoning and just a little bit of plain breadcrumbs to hold it all together. Like I told you before, it's always good to have your mise en place ready. That means everything in its place and all of our ingredients ready to go. We've got our breadcrumbs, our mayonnaise, our egg, our seasoning, our lump crab meat, a big bowl, a whisk, and a spoon. Let's get down to business. First, we'll grab a little bit of mayonnaise, pop it right in the bowl there. We're gonna crack our egg right in there. Make sure you leave the shells out. A Little bit of the seafood seasoning. And let's get that rocking and rolling. You want to be sure to get all the lumps out and nice smooth liquid. It's time to get the gloves out. What we'll do is put some of that nice jumbo lump crab meat right in there. Oh, why not use all of it? And we'll start with about half the breadcrumbs. Again, we want just enough to hold it together. We'll gently fold it to keep all those big lumps of crab together. Nice, moist mixture. We don't want it to be like a crab cake. We want it to be more like a crab imperial mixture. We'll do just a little bit more breadcrumbs. And that's going to be right where we need to be. A lot of cooking is all about feel. Just knowing by looking at something and feeling something that you're achieving the texture that you're looking for. Don't be afraid to get in there and get your hands dirty. With a glove on, that is. Now that we've got our oysters all shucked and lined up on a cookie sheet, we're going to take our mixture and gently spoon it right on top of the oysters and get ready to pop them in the oven. So check it out. I think our roasted oysters are just about done. Let's crack open the oven and see what we got. Oh, that's exactly what we're looking for. If you look, they're just starting to open around the edges. The shells are loose, oysters are steaming in their own juices there. They're going to be great. We're just going to let them chill for a little bit, pop them right open. The oysters will be cooked perfectly. They won't be too tough or overcooked. They'll be mouthwatering delicious. Let's get our other oysters in the oven here. Look at these. They look absolutely delicious. It's hard not to eat them right now. We're going to get these in the oven. Just enough to get that egg cooked, get the oyster cooked about halfway, the crab to brown up a little bit. It's going to be great. We're at 400 degrees. Let's pop them in there about 12 minutes. So here, as you can see, our oysters have roasted. We're gonna get in there where the shell's open and they just pop open real easily. And look at that, nice and juicy. Not fully cooked, not overcooked, but they're ready to rock. It's not the same as eating a raw oyster, but it's still really tasty. And for those people who are a little finicky and don't like a raw oyster, but still love the flavor, that's about as good as you're gonna get right there. All right, let's get down to it. It's been about 12 minutes. I can smell the oysters wafting through the house. I can't wait to get them on a plate and put them in my belly. Let's check them out here. Once again, 400 degrees, about 12 minutes, and they've got a beautiful, beautiful brown, golden brown color to them. Just cooked enough to get that egg cooked and the crab, oh, love it, dove it. Let's get them on a plate and get ready to eat them. So we've let these rest for just a few minutes, let them cool down a little bit, and now we're gonna put them on a simple plate, which is a little bit of mixed greens to hold them in place. I'm gonna pick the favorite big bad boys out here and we'll just kind of stagger them. Something as pretty as this doesn't even need a garnish. Just the contrast of the crab meat and the oyster and the juiciness is delicious. So let's get them rocking and rolling in my belly. Wow. So there it is. Beautiful, sustainable, local ingredients used simply, easily, popped right in the oven. We did them a couple of different ways, but this is what you want. Great, great oysters. If you want to see more oyster recipes, Stay tuned for more webisodes in the futures. And if you follow these easy instructions, 
you can rock the kitchen too.